Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue on the discussion on the characteristics of component. For this video, I'm going to emphasize on inductor. Earlier on, I have also discussed passive component like resistor. So if you're keen, okay, I have put the video link under the description. So take a look how does a resistor actually behave at high frequency. But for this video, I'm going to discuss the equivalent circuit of an inductor under the low and also the high frequency. I'm also going to discuss how does the Q, okay, which is the quality factor, actually for an inductor change with frequency. This will be the part 4A series discussion on inductor. Okay, for inductor, I plan to have 4B and 4C. Under 4A, okay, basically I'm going to discuss like what I mentioned earlier on, the equivalent circuit of an inductor and also how does the Q change with frequency. Under 4B, okay, I'm going to discuss how can we increase the Q. Under the part 4C, I'm going to discuss how can we wind up a coil in order to achieve certain value of inductor by changing, for example, the length of the coil the radius of the coin and also the numbers of turn. How can these three parameters affect the value of an inductor? This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, please also give me some comment so that I can improve my delivery. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. One of the key property of an inductor okay, is oppose any change in the amount of current flowing through it, okay, which means that the role of an inductor is to ensure a constant current. So this is the objective of an inductor is to ensure the current is fixed at a certain value. Whenever the current flow across the inductor change, okay, it either acquire charge or lose the charge in order to equalize the current passing through it. Okay, for example, when there is an increase or reduce of current, okay, either they Enquire, which means that they obtain more charge or they lose the charge so as to achieve a constant current. Inductor is called a choke, reactor, or just simply called coil. Okay, so inductor, for example, they have many names. Basically, they are either called choke, reactor, or simply just coil. Inductor is used in RF design in resonance circuit. Okay, for example, we have series and parallel resonance circuit. Basically, it's L and C, either in series or in parallel. So basically, the inductor actually work in this resonance circuit. Okay, we also use L and C for filter design. Okay, for example, whether is it low pass or high pass, basically determined by the position of the L and C. So this is also another use case for inductor under the filter. We also use inductor in phase shift and also the delay network. Okay, for EMC-wise, okay, this RF choke is used to prevent okay, or at least reduce the flow of RF energy along a certain path for EMI suppression. Okay, so I have done a series of EMC discussion. The role of inductor, for example, they can actually become a choke. Okay, basically, it is to choke the high frequency, okay, which means that they actually prevent high frequency component to pass through this inductor. Okay, so if you're keen to take a look on my EMC series discussion to understand this better. The SI unit of inductor is actually Henry. Okay, so for inductor typically like mini Henry or micro Henry for example. So these are or even sometimes nano Henry. So these are the typical so-called uh, SI unit for inductor. Okay, basically they are called Henry. For example, one mini Henry or one micro Henry, etc. An inductor is a passive electrical component that oppose 
sudden change in current. Okay, I, as I mentioned on the previous slide, okay, they actually prevent any changes of current. How they prevent is basically by slowing down current surge or spike. Okay, so they want to stop any surge or spike by temporarily store the energy in an electromagnetic field and then properly they will release it back into the circuit after some time. Okay, so this is how they ensure a constant current. Basically, they either store or they release the energy into the circuit. So with this, they actually ensure the amount of current is constant. An inductor is totally different from a capacitor. Okay, in the case of a capacitor, it store energy as electrical energy. Okay, so for capacitor, they actually store them as an electrical energy. But for an inductor, they actually store energy in the form of magnetic energy. Okay, so this is the key difference between capacitor and inductor. For capacitor, okay, basically most of the time we talk about electrical energy, while for inductor, we actually mention about magnetic energy. One key feature of the inductor is it also changed its priority, okay, which means that the plus and minus, they basically switch the position while they are discharging. In this way, priority change during discharge okay, can be made opposite. Okay, so you can see from here, okay, during charging. Okay, the meaning of reverse priority is mentioned here. Okay, I have put them under here for you to understand them better. Okay, but I'm not going to discuss about this reverse priority because I'm going to concentrate purely on inductor. But in short, what they want to say is basically the priority can be changed while they are actually discharging. This is a picture how does the inductor look like. So basically, you can see that basically it's a coil, coil in terms of numbers of turn, etc. So this can actually arrive at the inductor equivalent circuit, which is mentioned here. Okay, so how can we arrive at this equivalent circuit? Okay, for example, this is basically a conductor material. Basically, it's a wire. Okay, you can see that they basically coil over here. So you know that actually wire actually also have some form of resistance. Okay, although it can be a very small small resistor value for a wire, for example, but typically for an inductor, okay, if this is a conductor material, basically they have some form of loss. So we can govern the loss by this RS. So over here, you can see that RS is simply the DC plus AC resistance of coin. Okay, so let's take a closer look on the next slide in order to understand this better. Okay, but this basically under the DC and AC resistance of coin and also the core loss basically form up this RS here. Okay, so what is this CD? Okay, which is the interwiring capacitor. Okay, so I have brought this circuit closer for you to understand better. You can see that there is some little gap in between the two numbers of turns. Can you see here? The coil actually has some separation. Okay, they are not touching each other. Okay, so in an ideal world, we can't properly even force them to touch. Although they are very close to each other, okay, you bounce to have some small little gap here. Okay, so this small little gap actually form up this interwinding capacitor. So you can imagine that there will be a, some form of capacity effect Okay, between these two wine of coil here. So because of this, all the little coin separation, they add up basically from this inductor equivalent circuit of the C value here. So in short, okay, this is the inductor equivalent circuit. Next. Okay, so this is what I have mentioned early on. Next, what I want to discuss is basically the frequency here versus the impedance. I'm going to show you how the inductor actually behave under low frequency and also high frequency. Okay, let's take a look on this equivalent circuit. As I mentioned early on, okay, for example, when we actually want to determine the impedance, okay, we study how does the current flow. Okay, whether they will flow this path or whether they will flow this path. Let's take a look on this in order to understand better. For example, at low frequency, okay. At low frequency, for example, for this case here, this inductor, the impedance is governed by this equation, which is 2 pi FL. So at low frequency, okay, you can see that the impedance is very small. So you can assume that at low frequency, most of the current will actually prefer to flow this path because this L or impedance actually is a very small value. 
and because of a small value, the current actually prefer to flow this path here. Okay, so let's take a look on this path. So again, at low frequency, okay, so when this is very small, when this is small, I actually have a huge impedance of a capacitor. And therefore, because of a huge impedance of a capacitor, the current actually quite reluctant to flow this path. So at low frequency, you can assume that most of the current will actually flow this path here. So therefore, at low frequency, the inductor actually behave as an inductive. Okay, which means that an inductor is an inductor at low frequency. So you can see over here, okay, when the frequency increase, you can see, imagine here, when this frequency increase, okay, so they increase, okay, basically, they will keep on when this frequency increase, okay, the impedance also increase. So you can imagine that the impedance also increase. You can see here, okay, because this frequency increase, this impedance also increase. So therefore, the impedance keep on increase, increase, increase until it reach the so-called the equivalent or sub-resonant frequency. The inductor don't behave as an inductor anymore. In fact, after this sub-resonant frequency, an inductor become a capacitor. Can you see here? So what happened here is basically after this sub-resonant frequency, an inductor don't behave like an inductor anymore. In fact, they will be having the characteristics of a capacitor. So this is something that we want to avoid. So let's understand this deeper, how this actually happened. Okay, as you can see from here, when frequency keep on increase, okay, you can imagine that the impedance also keep on increase. And again, because of the increase of the impedance of an inductor, you can also assume that the current become less and less reluctant to flow this path. Can you imagine? They are lesser and lesser flowing this path because of high frequency. On the other side here, you can see that when frequency actually increase, okay, you can see that the impedance of the capacitor actually reduce. Okay, because of this reduction of this impedance of capacitor, the current actually now suddenly prefer to flow this path. So therefore, at high frequency, okay, the inductor actually become a capacitive effect. So please take note over here. Okay, so every inductor come with this sub-resonant frequency. So after this sub-resonant frequency, the characteristics of inductor actually change completely. Instead of inductor, it become a capacitor. So this sub-resonant frequency, you must be very careful. You must ensure that this sub-resonant frequency is much, much bigger than your circuit design. If not, if it's lesser than your circuit design, Okay, your inductor actually has a weird behavior. Instead of an inductor, they become a capacitor, which is not desired. So please be very careful when you design based on this sub-resonant frequency. Next, okay, I'm going to discuss on the quality factor or the Q. Okay, so this is the equivalent circuit of an inductor. If let's say we're going to ignore the distribute capacitor, Okay, so let's ignore this in order to make the discussion easier to understand. Okay, so from here, okay, this is the Q of a series resonator, which is governed by this equation. I have done a video, why is this equation? Okay, so if you can, okay, I will put the video link under the description. So take a look on that video in order to understand how I actually arrive at this equation here. Okay, again, this is the impedance of an inductor, which is governed by WL or 2 pi FL. So basically, it's over RS. Okay, so let's take a look. What happened here is basically, this is the quality factor versus the frequency. So we want to see when frequency increase, what will happen to the Q. So from here, you can see that when frequency increase, okay, you can anticipate that the Q also will increase, right? So this is what will happen at low frequency, when the frequency keep on increase, you can also assume that the, the Q quality factor also increase. Until certain point, okay, you can see from here, the Q actually reduce. Why they reduce is because of skin effect. Remember, I have also discussed on skin effect. Under low frequency or under DC, the, the current is evenly distributed throughout the whole conductor. Okay, imagine this is a cross-section view of an wire. 
okay, you can see that the conductor can okay, actually carry all the charges, okay, which means that the current actually flow evenly throughout the whole conductor. However, when frequency start to increase, okay, the current actually prefer to flow at the edge of the conductor. You can see here. So you can imagine that when the frequency increase, this white circle, okay, the diameter actually also increase, which means that when they actually increase, okay, they actually create a high resistance. Okay, because the surface area reduce, and when the surface area reduce, you can also anticipate that the resistance value also will increase. Correct? You can imagine over here, okay, imagine this is a water pipe. Okay, you can see that the water flow okay, is, will be very gentle. However, when you put your hand to, to compress onto the water tube here, okay, you can imagine that the water will start to splash out. Okay, because you actually generate a very high resistance over here. Okay, so therefore you can anticipate this is almost the same as what it means. At high frequency, okay, we actually introduce a very high RS, which means that the resistance value of the conductor actually increase. And from this equation here, you can see when this RS increase at high frequency, okay, you can see that the Q start to reduce. Can you see here? So this is what I mean because at high frequency, we have this skin effect. And because of this, my RS also start to increase. And when my RS increase, my Q start to fall. Okay, you can see from here, after this point, my Q start to fall. They will fall until they reach the self-resonant frequency. At this point, my Q is equal to zero. Okay, so let's take a look over here to understand better. At low frequency, Q increase directly with frequency, which I have explained early on. Okay, because the skin effect is not significant. Okay, because the RS is not significant. Okay, at low frequency, okay, the current actually flow throughout the whole conductor. So therefore, my RS is a very small number. However, at high frequency, okay, the shunt capacitor and skin effect of the wiring combine to decrease the Q of the inductor to zero at its resonant frequency. As I told you earlier on, when frequency increase, okay, I actually have a much, much severe of skin effect okay, because you can imagine that this white circle, the radius actually start to increase. So they cover more and more of this conductor. And because of this, I have lesser surface area to flow. Therefore, my RS actually increase. When my RS increase, okay, you can imagine that my Q will be reducing. And therefore, because of this at high frequency, you can see that my Q actually start to reduce. Okay, with this, i like to end my discussion. Please check to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Thank you so much, guys.